Hi, Scissoring here with another Path of Exile University, and today we are going to talk about mapping. Our um, entire lesson got gimped a little bit because obviously there's so many changes that a lot of things we had planned aren't really relevant anymore. So we're just going to do it a little bit off the cuff and talk about a lot of mapping tips. And there, there is quite a lot of things we can we can still talk about. So this is all about mapping and we'll, we'll explain a little bit about the new atlas and we'll make another video uh, in a few days uh, about the atlas skill tree etc once that comes online. But 3.17 gives us a brand new atlas and a new endgame bosses to go towards. And uh, Zana has been replaced by Kirak and that's completely okay because Kirak is so much better. Friendship ended with Zana. And the older bosses, they aren't gone. You can still fight Cyrus, Baran, etc. But they are similar to the Shaper and Elder Guardians now. Where they appear at tier 14 plus as drops. And they appear as viable maps from Kirak or um, quest maps that he will give you as dailies. But, Mr. Streamer, what map do I farm? We cannot answer that right now. Um, there is going to be an Atlas skill tree and we will have a POB thing up for that as soon as uh, they are public. We'll show a planner for that and what to take, when to take. So that's good. And the new out of skill tree, the way you unlock skill points for that is just by finishing the map bonus. So it's pretty easy and uh, you get it very early. But yeah, and for, for the highest chaos per hour in maps, you're going to have to keep an eye out on that. But yeah. The number one thing to know when it comes to mapping is the hideout is lava. Very often people spend a lot, a lot of time in their hideout for no reason between maps. The biggest thing you can do is to pre-roll maps. They have a lot of maps ready to go. If you're entering a map, leaving, then rolling one individual map, that's like pretty bad for, for efficiency. And you'll notice you'll get like 10 to 100 exalt more per lee by doing like rolling 20 maps. And then doing one map leaving, one map leaving, one map leaving. That's like a very, very, very big thing for specifically if you feel like you're poor and you want more currency. Like you'll you'll literally be surprised at how much currency you'll be making. Um, another thing for early mapping, new players can very often like leave a map up to six times. Like they'll fill up their inventory, sell them to the vendor and, and go back in and get more things. Generally, I very rarely will enter a map twice. Obviously, if you die, you have to go back in. But um, yeah, it's like playing a slot machine. Think of it as like, like maps aren't a finite resource anymore. They used to be back in the day, but you have infinite maps basically. So you just want to spin that slot machine as much as you can. As much as you can. And you want to use the Atlas Currencies and, and Consumables. Like, for example, Sextants, which obviously we get access to later now. They, they want, you want to use them. You spend money to make money. Um, you can obviously get unlucky streaks. And sometimes, depending on the league, sometimes the league mechanic won't necessarily drop as many maps. And you can maybe run out. Sometimes we're low on alchemies. Um, it's important to remember, I'll show in-game for this. Remember that, for example, sometimes when you're low on alchemies, uh, Lani will let you buy alchemies for regrets. And you can do conversions and stuff as well. <coughs> Ooh. Like, yeah, chances to scouring, suffusing, etc. To jewelers suffusing. Um, master missions are very important to use. Don't let them just rot. Even like most of them are worth using. Like throw them on a map and use them. Early on things like bestiary and stuff are great for getting like six things early, five things. And just very, very useful. So make sure you're using them. You can save like for example incursion ones are really good when farming divination cards. Or when you need something from the temple. What to map for? Fun! If you're not having fun... Maybe you don't have any goals. It's very important in Path of Exile to have goals. Um, maybe set a goal like, oh, I want to do Shaper. Or I want to do Awakener. I want to do the new bosses. Goals are very, very important. Um, sometimes it's because you're just playing a build that you don't like. So, yeah. And and sometimes you just aren't in a mapping mood. There are other content like Dell, for example. Sadly, everything right now is tied directly to mapping. 
We do have new pinnacle bosses as well, which is very exciting. Pinnacle is just, you know, the core main bosses. So the pinnacle bosses right now is the Maven, the Uber Elder, and the two new ones that I actually don't remember the name of. Uh, but they have names. And yeah, so many things are changing, which is obviously why half of this lesson is scrapped. And uh, the Maven is acquired through Maven Witnessing Maps. We don't know the specifics yet of how the like three-way, four-way, five-way, and six-way, and ten-way works now. We don't specifically know like, do we have to do it four times? Like how that works. But I'm sure we'll get more information on the specifics of how many three, four, five, six ways, etc. We have to do now. But the Maven is very much still a big part of the Atlas. And she now drops the Awakener Orb. And the Awakener drops the Maven Orb. Staring Exarch and Eater of Worlds from Terraria. I should just think Terraria. Um, but yeah, and then we have Cyrus. Is uh, He got the Schaefer and Elder treatment. And still, even even after like Awakened Gems no longer drop for Cyrus, it still has really, really good drops. And uh, obviously we still have Shaper and Elder. And the Atlas bonus gives you Atlas passive point in addition to the bonus. So you can uh, you can build your own endgame. And it's global now. It affects every map. So we can see the Atlas here is the new one. There's no regions. So things like Steel Rings, etc. just drop everywhere. And... Um, What's really important to note here is there are no watchstones anymore. There are void stones, but you only um, you only get void stones after killing Uber Elder, Maven, the Exarch, and or sorry, Scarlet. Oh yes, Exarch and Eater World. That's the four that give you the four void stones, and you only have four. Um, once you have four, that upgrades every map to tier sixteen. But what's important to note and what's really good about this new atlas is, see that. We go straight from tier 1 to tier 16 with nothing in. So you can progress all the way to tier 16s without killing a single boss. So these are the four tier 1 maps and then it just goes up. Which is really, really good. Um, and something I really want to explain that is 99% going to work the same or similar enough. Uh, is 3 to one maps is extremely strong. And so right now it's region based, right? So I have Haunted Mansion here. And if we see the tier 2 maps here is Guarded, Waterways, and Reef. Now, what's really strong about the new Atlas is there's no region. So here we can see that these three sell for Gardens. These three sell for Reef. And... I don't think I have a combo. But with these, I can just keep doing different combinations. Gardens, Gardens, Reef, Reef, Waterways. So I can do different combinations to get any map a tier above and that will work the same here so this map whatever is that palace selling uh three palaces will sell for you know maybe that map but then you can exchange one map and it'll be a different combination it's a little bit complicated but once you have seven of the same map you can basically get any of the tier above because you can just keep playing around so you see these three will always sell for reef this is a very important thing to know. It might seem a little complicated, but it is actually pretty simple. These three, no matter what I do, will always sell for the same. These will always be a reef. But now you can see I have with these two, I have a combination of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different combinations I can do with just these. And then get any map a tier above. And that's even stronger on the new Atlas because this can become any tier two. And it'll be the same here, like any tier 7 will sell for any tier 8. So very, very good because sometimes maybe you are over here and maybe you want to map over here. So it can be a very strong way for unlocking the Atlas. So make sure you like experiment and play around a little bit with selling combinations of maps. It's dependent on the inventory slot? No. So think of each and every map as having their own item ID. It's not something we can see, but these are all completely unique items. It has nothing to do with where they are or or what uh, combination these three maps are put in. That doesn't matter. It's all about... Think of it as different ingredients for a recipe. Like this is a different map than that. So that's really cool. And then you obviously have uh, Kirik as well. 
you get missions from him make sure you remember you can hold alt on maps as well and it'll show you if you have the atlas completion the bonus completion etc um and you can do that on kirex missions too so really really strong and uh he refreshes every time you do a daily mission it's every time you start one and the maps that he will give you is based on your bonus so if you have max bonus you're more likely to get like conqueror maps shaper maps cortex etc um and then einar oh and also something worth noting is like say you have like right now i have 35 white missions well if i had 118 bonus i could just spam these on shitty maps and have a pretty good chance of getting a few cortex maps to buy so make sure you check your map vendor and uh, see whether he is selling good things INR really good especially early you get a bunch of uniques and sometimes things like six things etc Jun obviously needed for betrayal and unveils and just good loot and XP in general Nico for delving and it's always worth picking up soul fight it's never worth just leaving it there uh because there is a divination card that gives you 10 alterations by clicking on the yellow um and then Alva obviously really really good loot and I especially use it when farming div cards and how do you roll maps and what do you use on it? So you use alchemy herbs and binding. You can use harvest in a pinch. Uh, harvest was used in Harvest League, was it? Or maybe the league after because we were struggling on alchemies. Um, and uh, yeah. So if it's a white map, it only needs to be magic to get the bonus. A yellow need to be rare. And a red map requires to be rare and corrupted. You could alt regal and then volley and hope it doesn't, you know, turn into an 8 mod map um and especially on softcore you want to roll your maps as hard as you can handle quantity and pack size will make a very big difference so rolling is definitely worth it it's pretty much always on trade league worth alking maps on solo cell phone it can be worth to roll maps blue because you might have an alchemy problem and um also obviously if you're a hardcore it can be dangerous but don't make it like sometimes so I do another series called Sunday Roast and somebody actually took footage of themselves mapping and when they died and like tried to ask for questions like why did I die and the maps they were rolling one guy was rolling things like monsters have multi -proj, monsters have turbo monsters have extra damage as fire and lightning and minus max and I was like dude you are rolling suicide maps so you do need to be a little bit careful so you're not getting just stomped on even in softcore um in hardcore i normally do one or two damage mods and you can probably do three or four in softcore pretty okay but you know you do want to make sure you're not getting like soul fucked repeatedly and, and just dying over and over again um and yeah rolling multiple maps at once and then you can use the search tab so you could roll it in like a normal either a quad tab or in a normal stash tab um and then just search you know like is it reflect? Is it elemental reflect? Is it first reflect? Is it max? Like minus max resist? Is it multi proj? So you can like search and it'll highlight the maps. Um, it's really really good on hardcore. And then yeah, you could you could make like a multi line string as well. So you could be like, you could have like a copy paste on a notepad. So you could be like reflect, um, and then uh, max, and then uh, fizz. So you could like make your own string like that to search. So here, for example, we have elemental effect or monsters fire two additional pros. Generally, you don't need the entire name. You just need enough that it searches for it. So here, for example, you can search for L, R, E and Proj. These wouldn't like, they wouldn't appear anywhere else. This would be the only place where these would appear. And then it'll be shorter. So you can make longer searches. Like for example on hardcore. I always skip multi -proj. I uh, like monsters fire two additional projectiles. I always skip. Uh, players have minus max resistances. And I generally skip crit. Unless I have crit reduction. They're like the main ones. That can kill you. So what do you use on maps? We have a lot of different things. We have scarabs. Scarabs are really really good. And they're placed in the map device to add mechanics. There's like Legion Scarabs, Strongbox Scarabs, etc. And you have different tiers. And 
when you're investing in your map, you generally want to use as much as possible because everything affects everything, right? So for example, you have like um, chisels is what you start. That's the basic thing you use. Generally, I would use chisels on like tier 12 to 16. And you want to use this while the map is still white because then they're getting five quality per use instead of one. If you do it when a map's already rare, you have 20 chisels per map. You should never ever do that um, with very few exceptions. But you want to like... Everything becomes like a juice pyramid, right? So if you're chiseling the map, well, your scarabs will also get affected by that. Like the monsters spawned by the scarabs will get affected by the chisels. And if you then also have like an influence scarab, let's say you're using a shaper scarab and a breach scarab, right? Obviously, they're all getting affected by the influence. Uh, and then things will get affected by the sextant and everything. The more you use, the more better everything will be. Um... And you want to have it as more better as possible. So just, it's just very strong the more you do. Like you don't want to just do a winged scarab. Very, very important. And um, say you do a winged breach scarab, right? And a shaper scarab. The breach monsters can drop influence gear too. And like beyond, for example, will get affected by everything. So favorite map system. Now... It's going to be very, very different than the current system we have. Let's see. I have a video or image of it here. The favorite map system now has 12 slots. I think they said the first one unlocks at tier 16. And we'll update if that changes. But the favorite map system, the way it works. I'm going to bring out Notepad for this. Let's say that we are going to favorite beach. Right? And let's say that I don't know this for sure. because Because I haven't bothered looking at the atlas. But let's say that Wharf doesn't even exist anymore. Uh... Crematory, even a map anymore. Uh, this this doesn't exist anymore either, does it? Torture chamber. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's say that these are the maps. These are all the same tier. Let's. I haven't actually looked. I can't remember. Doesn't really matter. But let's say these are all tier ten maps, right? For this, and then I favorite a beach map. What happens? So, when a map drops, it will go. Okay, a map drops. Is it tier ten? Yes. What tier 10 maps can drop? Well, Beach, Wharf, Torture Chamber, June, and Mesa can drop. Which one drops? Okay, it's Beach. Well, if we favorite the map, this happens. It'll go like the same process, and it'll be like, is it a Beach, Wharf, Torture Chamber, June, Mesa, or a Beach, 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 or a Beach? And then, if you favorite it 12 times, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, This is what it'll look like. Except that. It'll be... Sorry for the flashbang. It'll be... Is it a wharf torture chamber due to Mesa? Or a beach? So, favoriting something 12 times, it'll be very unlikely that any other map. So, it'll keep the normal one and add 10 additional. So, with this, you would have 121 instances of beach. This is very, very useful because if, if, um, which is what is most likely, if you put in all four, I think every single map goes to tier 16, unless Chris misspoke. I don't think they go to tier 14 and 16. That's most likely with three stone in, stones in, that some here will be 14 and some here will be 16. Um, but with four, when everything goes to 16, then you could actually need this to be able to sustain one because you're going to just have a shit ton of maps drop. And like can drop. So there will be a reason to have like multiple like really really favored like that. Um, where are my slides go? So favoriting the maps very very good. And some unlock with like killing Shaper Guardians, Elder Guardians, etc. Uh, Maven probably. But uh, yeah, I don't know how hard it'll be to unlock all. There. Uh, there's also some league mechanics preferred for a certain style of map. So, sometimes, for example, Legion or Breach could be bad in, like, a really, like, cooked up map. Like a dungeon, for example, right? You might get trapped by walls and not be able to, um, farm everything you need. Um, but, but for example, if you're a Cyclone, 
then maybe you do want tight corridors. So it depends on your build a little bit too. Um, stair speed leads generally look for tight maps with no backtracking. So Toxic Sewer is a very, very popular map for a lot of people. It's like you can just run in one straight line. Mesa is other popular maps. Generally, you want maps that have like no backtracking. Um, un like least favorite maps would be things like... What's that really awful graveyard-like map called? That I always forget the name of. I like to press it. What's the awful? Awful map. Chat, help. Grave Throw. Grave Throw is an awful map with a lot of backtracking and a tedious boss with a cinematic almost before you get to fight it. Just awful. Uh, so there's a lot of backtracking. And also, obviously it depends on the active league mechanic too. Uh, what kind of map you want to do. Uh, Blight, for example, really likes cramped maps. So if you're ever doing Blight in, for example, Dungeon or something like that, or something that it could end up being really tight, sometimes it will do all, in a tier 16, it'll do all of the plants from one lane. And if there's only one lane, it'll only give you Blight rewards. So I think the most you can get is like 11 or 12 is the most I've seen. But you could end up getting two lanes with six, for example. So... Is really, really good doing Blight and Cramped Up maps. Whereas in a large open area like Dunes, you're going to get like a bunch of different lanes. You're not going to get like one. And we will have a lot more, more videos too. And to track your mapping efficiency, you can use a tool called MapWatch. It's available as a website, standalone software as well. Um, and it'll like, yeah, it'll tra track your time and maps. See how many maps you've done. Uh, like... I use that in ultimatum to see how many like uh what what percentage spawn rate my uh taskmaster or trial master was called um we're we're gonna do some extra stuff because most of the lesson died but obviously the three to one thing is very very important favorite maps is going to be important too and this is probably something Carvarusco is going to examine and talk about in great detail because he makes like 10 hour long, super smart, giga brain map videos. Um, but sometimes there is a reason to not complete maps. Carv will probably figure that out pretty quickly. But let's say, let's say that we don't complete this chunk of the Atlas, right? Then you will just have less maps able to drop um that you aren't competing for with other slots so sometimes there are reasons where you completely avoid bad layout maps like grave throw and stuff like that um obviously that comes out of diamond side you get no passive point but we don't know if we need that many passive points like they said it was very heavily front loaded you might not need to go for 118 anyway so we're going to min max that and try to see if there's a reason not to complete maps or if it's too punishing not to but uh, there's been most atlases now there's been especially early really good reasons not to complete like maybe for divination card farming um what we've done on the current atlas very often is keep like one map as the only tier four to farm early six things right like i really want to six thing in the first 16 hours so normally what i do then is make sure i only have that one map that i can drop for that tier so i can just keep spamming that one map for divination cards um but obviously because so much is missing from uh our knowledge of maps right now we'll be making a second video in a few days talking about more things that we will find out like the atlas passives so we'll we'll end that there and um is there any questions about maps any mapping questions before we end Yeah, David. For Delve, just take the Delve nose on the Atlas tree and, and buy Scarab. On Tradely, you can buy maps. Yep. So depending on the maps you're trying to farm, it might actually be better to use three instead of four. Correct. We don't have the exact details on the new witness mechanic. I doubt it. I doubt Hologram Master's passive. 
True, you can itemize sextants now. That's actually pretty good for once you get to the end game. Like, if you get a really, really good sextant, you can itemize that and sell it, like with Beast. Selling gen missions, for example, yeah. Also completing all tier 5 master for yellows. There's no need. And you want to push into yellows early anyway to get your rublev. Do remember that... Um, do remember that the... You don't need to do lab trials anymore. You just need to get a uh, rublev fragment. The, whatever it's called. Tribute. Uh, you can get that from ritual or a divination card. Or buying it from another player. You don't need to do a single rublev trial. You just need to have the offering. Is it confirmed that 3 to 1 ink maps is not limited to link maps on the next Atlas next patch? No, but they haven't been limited to link maps for a very long time, so I don't think they will be. I don't think they will be. But I think, um... Do we know how Orb of Horizon will work? Orb of Horizon will work probably exactly the same as now, where it's based on its natural tier. So... This is harder to see on a map tab that's already explored, but... For example, a tier 16, this can only turn into like four different ones. Alleyway, Summit, Erecting Nest. Like this cannot turn into... Is it Maze? Like if it's not naturally a tier 16, then it cannot turn into... Like if... It's basically the first time it appears. Yeah, like Dunes. Like it cannot turn into a tier 16 Dunes. Because Dunes exists as a tier 4. It's the first time it appears. That's how Horizons work. We're going to end it there. And then we're going to start theory crafting some build guides and stuff like that. Um, thanks for watching on YouTube. Sub if you like the video. But more importantly, try to die. That's the night.